ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we continue on the subject of the heart, the qalb, which in Arabic, يعني, of course, it has a reference to mean what turns. We know the heart to be what beats. to pump blood through our body to give us a physical life and existence. And we know that the heart has a spiritual state and it controls many times the emotions and the likes of the body. But this qalb literally means to turn and it describes how the heart constantly turns or changes into different states. So we want to continue to look at how this heart is a pinnacle that we should focus on in our life, a piece of flesh that we should focus on day in and day out to rectify and make correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُمُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلُّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصْرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah says what means, have you not seen him who takes his lusts, his vain desires as his ilah? They take the desires as his God. For some it's money, for some it's pleasing their urges of their body or whatever it may be. But there are those who take their God as their desires. And Allah knowing them as such, let them stay astray and seal their hearing and seal their hearts and put a covering on their sight. Who will then guide them after Allah? Will you not then remember? In this ayah, Allah, He says that He is the one who seals the heart. making it not receptive to the truth. It can hear it maybe, but it won't accept it, because that heart has been sealed off. And he specifically speaks about desires, ones that none of us will benefit from. They will not benefit the believer in any way, only to satisfy his nafs, his self in this dunya. ثم قال الله الذين يجادلون في آيات الله بغير سلطان آتاهم كبر مقت عند الله وَعِنْدَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كَذَلِكَ يَطْبَعُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ قَلْبِ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ قَلْبِ مُتَكَبِّرٍ جَبَّارٍ Allah says what means, those who dispute about the ayat of Allah, His proofs, His signs, His evidences, without any authority that has come to them, it is greatly hateful, it is disgusting to Allah that a person would do this, and to those who believe, they should feel equally as disgusted. Thus does Allah seal every heart of every arrogant tyrant, so they cannot guide themselves to the right path. This kibir, as we mentioned, its origin is in the heart, this arrogance and pride, and Allah will seal those who have that and seal their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, no calamity befalls. 
nothing happens but by the leave, by the decree, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart to the truth. The one who believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart, make it a heart that accepts faith bil yaqeen with certainty and without any doubt. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ أَلَمْ يَأْمِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Has not the time come for the hearts of those who believe in Tawheed and the oneness of Allah? Those who believe in the oneness of Allah firmly without any doubt, has not the time come for them to be affected by Allah's reminder, by this Qur'an, by the ayat that we hear from uh, that Allah revealed to all of humanity? Has not the time come that when we hear the words of Allah, it should make our hearts tremble, it should make us wake up, it should make us fear His punishment, it should make us yearn for His Jannah. Again, the heart being focalized. Prophet Ibrahim as we mentioned previously, he made that dua, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ Do not disgrace me, O Allah, on the day when all of the creatures will be resurrected. Do not disgrace me. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَانٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day where money and children, they will not avail you. You cannot come on the day of resurrection and say, let me use the money I had and the home I had and the children I had to ransom myself to earn Jannah. That won't happen. إِلَّا مِنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who comes to Allah with a good, pure, clean heart. This isn't free of cholesterol. This is the heart that has no kufr in it, no shirk in it only worships Allah, and at the same time it is free of nifaq, it is free of hypocrisy. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ And Allah says what means, those who believe in the oneness of Allah, and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, indeed, surely in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest. This is the solution for all of the troubles, all of the ailments, all of the illnesses, all of the hardships, the anxieties, the depressions, all this that we have, it is with the remembrance of Allah that your heart will find rest. It's not in drugs or alcohol, it's not in music, it's not in just hanging out or vacation, it is in the remembrance of Allah. This is what will bring the heart to have contentment, have peace, happiness and rest. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we've been saying, the heart is the place for happiness, the place for peace and contentment, but it's also the place that originates from it, any depression or anxiety, any sadness, any illnesses that belong, that, that are part of the body. This is why we always remind ourselves with that basic hadith regarding the heart, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Where the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, <coughs> He said, verily in the body is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the rest of the body will be sound. But if it is corrupt, the rest of the body will be corrupt. And indeed, that piece of flesh is the heart. As we've been saying, it might just be the size of your fist when you make a fist. But yet, if it is not sound, then who cares what the rest of your body does? If it is corrupt, then who cares what good the rest of your body does? The heart is essential for you to fix for you to reprimand, for you to warn it, for you to work on it, for you to rectify it, so that you may be on Allah's good side and enter Jannah bi The sound heart has no kibbutz, it has no arrogance. The sound heart always tries to please Allah. The sound heart always looks to the Qur'an and the Sunnah in order to follow it so they can please their Lord and make it to Jannah. But the sick heart is controlled by their desires. The sick heart just wants to fulfill what it wants at this dunya, usually materialistic. This is the sick heart. And many surahs, many surahs, they, up, they touch upon the heart. Maybe over around 130 times in the Qur'an is the heart mentioned. And many times in the sunnah as well. So know it is a vital organ, not only for your physical life, but for your spiritual life, your spiritual well-being, your mental well-being. And of course, it is essential for you to succeed in your akhirah, in your next life. Now we go to the hadith. An Abi Sa'idin al-Khudri radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khaslatani la yajtami'ani fi mu'min al-bukhul wa su'ul khuluq. This hadith, which is sahih li ghayrihi in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said two qualities are never combined in, the, in a believer. And these two qualities, 
their source, their place of rest, their place of sprouting comes from the heart. These two qualities are never combined in a believer. Al-Bukhul, being miserly, being greedy, being stingy. The believer never has this in their heart. And su al khuluq bad character. These are character, these are traits that we consider abstract. We don't think of as them as something material. But they are two things that they come from the heart. They originate in the heart. They take their root in the heart. So you must rid your heart of any greed and any bad character. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-abd idha akta'a khati'ah nukitat fi qalbihi nukta, nukta tun sawda, فَإِذَا هُوَ نَزَعَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ وَتَابَ سُقِلَ قَلْبَهُ وَإِنْ عَادَ زِيدَ فِيهَا حَتَّى تَعْلُوا قَلْبَهُ وَهُوَ الرَّانِ الَّذِي ذَكْرَهُ اللَّهِ كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ This hadith, sahih in the sunnah of the Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Verily when the servant commits a sin, a black mark appears on his heart. If he abandons the sin and leaves the sin and asks Allah to forgive him and he repents, then his heart will be polished off. That black mark will be polished off. But if he returns to the sin, the blackness will continue to spread until it overcomes his heart. And this is the covering that Allah revered, referred to when he said, كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانْ يَكْسِبُونَ And Surah Al-Mutafafeen, where he said what means, no, rather a covering is over their hearts from what they have earned. What they have earned is their sins. And those sins can pile up until they turn the whole heart dark and it becomes a hardened heart. And maybe one that cannot be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah chooses. Thawban here narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, أَفْضَلَهُ يَعْمِ الْمَالِ لِسَامٌ ذَاكِرٌ وَقَلْبٌ شَاكِرٌ وَزَوْجَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ تُعِينُهُ عَلَى إِيمَانِهِ this hadith in the sunnah of the Tirmidhi and it is sahih. The Prophet he said the best wealth. The best wealth is what is to follow. It is not money. It is not that you have scores of cash, properties that you own. It is not that you're living large in this life. This is not what the best wealth is. The best, what, the best wealth is a tongue that remembers Allah. This person is rich. This person has riches that will buy him this life and the next. The tongue that remembers Allah. The one who has a grateful heart. The heart that is content. The one that although he may have this little bit on his plate, and he sees others dumping big plates, he's still content and he praises Allah. The one who has a small home for his five or six family members, he's still content and happy, although others may have five times as much space in their home. The, the grateful heart. The one who always turns to Allah. Thanking him, knowing that what Allah chose for him or her is great and sufficient, and they don't want anything more than Allah wants for them. This person is the wealthiest of the people, and a believing wife to help her husband increase in his faith. This is wealth. If a man has this, this is wealth. You have it all. If you have these characteristics, a believing woman as your wife who encourages you to go to the masjid, encourages you to give charity even when you're closing your hand. A woman who encourages you to fast more and do more good. These things are what make a person wealthy. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at-taqwa ha'una, and he pointed to his heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he pointed to his heart and he said, taqwa is here. So you may think, how can something that is necessary for Allah to love us, necessary for us to make it to Jannah. How can something be in something so small, we just think of it as something that has to beat, so that the rest of our body can function and breathe, and oxygen can flow to our muscles. Taqwa is in your heart. It is encompassed by things we always hear it described as, fearing Allah, keeping your duty to Allah, Putting a, a barrier between yourself and Allah's punishment by you obeying Allah and His Messenger وسلم, We remind ourselves when Ubay radiallahu anhu, he was asked by Umar radiallahu anhu, what is taqwa? 
So Ubay told him, Oh Umar, did you ever walk down a path with thorny bushes on the side and it was narrow? He said, yes. He said, how did you walk down that path? He said, very carefully. Ubay asked him why. He said, because if I didn't, the thorns could grab my thobe and tear it. He said, this is taqwa. That cautiousness to obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم, to stay away from disobedience so that you don't get punished by Allah, that is taqwa, its place is in that heart. So how do we function day in and day out, taking advantage of our heartbeats and not realize that this piece of flesh houses taqwa? It, has, it houses that piety and that righteousness that you should seek to have so Allah loves you. Zayd ibn Thabit, he narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, مَنْ كَانَتْ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّهُ فَرَّقَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرَهُ وَجَعَلَ فَقْرَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَأْتِيهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ الْآخِرَ نِيَّتَهُ جَمَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَمْرَهُ وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةً this hadith in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, I mean the Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever's concerned with this life, if this is what you want, go for it. It's all yours to take. Enjoy it as you please, but you will not be pleased in the next life. He said, whoever is concerned about the world, Allah will disorder your affairs. You will never feel like anything is settled. He will make poverty appear before your eyes. And you will, you will not get anything from this world, but what is decreed from you. Strive all you want, sweat all you want, cheat all you want, deceive all you want. You're only going to get what Allah gave you. Because your hem, your mindset is only in this life. But whoever is concerned about the akhirah, the hereafter, Allah will settle his affairs. Allah will make everything work out. He will make it happen for you. And He will make him content in his heart. His heart will be okay with anything Allah has decreed for him. Even if everyone else seems to be doing better, happier, healthier, richer, he knows that he's content because Allah gave him what he has. And that is sufficient. And the world will come to him although he's reluctant to it. The one who wants the akhirah, the world Allah will still give you good from it. Even though you don't want it because you want it in the next life. You're reluctant to take anything from this dunya because you want the akhirah so bad. But it will still come to you. Because your eyesight is on the prize of Jannah, not this dunya. Al-Ghar al muzani he reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, إِنَّهُ لَيُغَانُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِي وَإِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي, في الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةً In Sahih Muslim, we have the authentic hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he said, verily at times there's a fog over my heart. There's a fog over my heart, so I seek the forgiveness of Allah a hundred times in a day. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, promised that for those a'la promised to be in the highest of Jannah with the other prophets and the martyrs and, and the, the righteous ones and the first to believe. Yet he would seek istighfar, he would say astaghfirullah a hundred times a day. And Nawawi, he commented on this saying, قِيلَ الْمُرَادُ الْفَطِرَاتُ وَالْغَفَلَاتُ عَنَ الذِّكْرِ الَّذِي كَانَ شَأْنُهُ الدَّوَامَ عَلَيْهِ فَإِذَا فَطَرَ عَنْهُ أَوْ غَفَلَ عَدَّ ذَلِكَ ذَنْبًا وَاسْتَغْفَرَ مِنْهُ And now we commenting on this hadith, he said what it means is that the Prophet ﷺ, he had intervals of forgetting Allah. Not forgetting Him completely. Intervals of being distracted. Intervals of being inattentive. Because of stress, because of fatigue, because of tire, because of what else it may be. But he had these periods of time. But when the Prophet ﷺ had these times of inattention, he would say astaghfirullah, considering it a sin, he would say astaghfirullah and seek forgiveness from it. And this was the Sharh al Nawawi regarding Sahih Muslim. Considering it a sin to be inattentive to Allah. How many hours go by a day? How many days go by a week where the amount of time we remember Allah, think of Allah, are attentive to Allah is the support for why we're still breathing, why we're still walking, why we're still seeing, why we're still hearing. We would have to say astaghfirullah a hundred times, however many minutes in the day. Subhanallah. Be mindful of this. Abdullah ibn Amr, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَرُزِقَ كَثَافَ وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَاهُ Abdullah ibn Amr, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
he has succeeded. The one who's really successful is the one who has embraced Islam as his deen. Whose provision is sufficient, whatever Allah has given him, he makes do with it and he does not complain about it. And whom Allah has made content with what he has given him. That contentment is in the heart. Only the heart can say, the tongue can say it and it's a lie. The heart truly will either be calm and relaxed, trusting on its Lord, or it will be one that doubts and has worry and doesn't care, wants more based on what they think, not on what Allah has chosen for them. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إياكم والحسد فإن الحسد يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطب أو قال العشبة. This hadith in the Sunan of Abi Dawood and it is Sahih. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said beware of envy and we mentioned this previously in the last week. Envy, hasad, its source again it emanates from your heart not being content. Your heart not being fine with what Allah has given you or chosen for you. Your heart wanting what others have. Your heart wanting or your heart hating that others have something you don't have. So now you start wanting them to not have it, for it to be taken away from them, for them to lose it. This hasad, this envy is a disease. It's a sick disease. And really the one who has that, they have no contentment from Allah. They have no contentment in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not content with whatever Allah chose for them. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beware of this envy, because it devours the good deeds. It'll burn them up, just like fire burns through wood. Or he mentioned grass. How fire would take a field of grass. Envy, again, it sources the heart. All of these aspects, arrogance, pride, envy, hate, animosity, greed, bad character, all of these are in the heart. And it's that heart, if it's sound, then you will be sound on the day of judgment. But if it's corrupt, you will be corrupt. May Allah protect us and guide our hearts. أقول قال هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله يغفر لكم دنيا. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we just mentioned, the hadith we constantly mentioned, over maybe some around 130 ayat mentioning the heart. Look at all the hadith we've been reviewing week in and week out about the heart. Work on it, rectify it, correct it, ask Allah to guide it. This was one of his most famous ad'iyah that he would make commonly with when he was with his wife Umm Salama radiallahu anha. يَا مُقَلِّبِ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكِ O changer or turner of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your deen. Always ask Allah to make your, your heart correct. To make it firm on this deen. Free of nifaq, free of hypocrisy, free of all those evil things we just mentioned. Malice and greed and, and pride and arrogance and jealousy and envy. And make it one that's content with what Allah gave you. Make it one that's happy with what Allah chose for you. Make it one that relies upon Allah because you know that next life is where all your, you should put your, the, the, jar, the jar you should put all your marbles in. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he mentioned the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَافُوا تَسْقَطُوا الدَّغَائِن بَيْنَكُمْ الدَّغَائِن وَبَيْنَكُمْ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith which is greater as Hassan, forgive each other and drop the grudges between yourselves. Forgive one another. Holding on to hostility, holding on to a grudge, it is the heart that suffers. And then the rest of your body suffers. Because you don't want to forgive. You don't want to let something go. You want revenge. You just want to see someone else pay a price. This is all a disease of your heart. You may get them back and then be so happy you got your revenge. But I, we should not want to be in that situation. That is one of the sickest hearts that somebody can have. That you want to take matters into your own hand and your heart doesn't want to forgive. It doesn't want to, it just wants to hold the grudge. As Sanani he commented on this saying, Addaghain wa hiyal al haqad wal adawa wal hasad fa innaha min al kabail ay asfatu dalika min kulubikum wa tahiruha anhu. As Sanani, he commented on this hadith saying, grudges are malice. Grudges is enmity. 
It's hatred. Indeed, they are amongst the greatest of sins that a person can have. So let them fall away from your hearts and purify your hearts from them. Get these things out of your heart. Forgive so Allah may forgive you. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تكثر الكلام بغير ذكر الله فإن للقلب وإن أبعد الناس من الله القلب القاسي. This hadith, which is in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi and is Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, don't speak too much without remembering Allah. How many sittings do we have with our family and friends? How many good occasions like weddings and the like? How many sad occasions which should remind us of our akhirah, like funerals and the like? How many of these happen and there's no remembrance of Allah? It's just talking about dunya. It's just talking about things you want to aim for in this life, or things that have happened to you in this life, or whatever it may be. Do not talk too much without remembering Allah. Every sitting you have with someone should have the reminder of Allah. Every jalsa you have with a family member, a friend, a brother, a sister, whatever it may be, should have a remembrance of Allah, even if it's just a dua that will benefit you both. Do not speak too much without remembering Allah. Verily, too much talking without remembering Allah, it hardens the heart. The furthest of the people from Allah is the one with the hard heart. And we have become a people who only remember Allah in hard times. Only remember Allah when something bad has happened to us. Only remember Allah when there's some dunya benefit for us. Not remembering all this time, it's our heart that is hardening. Amr ibn, ibn Abi Habib, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, abdun wa khasira man lam yaj'al Allah fi qalbihi rahmatan lil bashar. This hadith, which is graded as Hassan, the Prophet وسلم, said, A servant has failed and lost. You have failed the test of this dunya. You have lost the test of this dunya. You have lost everything it could have bought you and gotten you in the next life with Jannah. If Allah has not placed mercy in His heart towards humanity. As Muslims, of course, the Muslims, our brothers and sisters of the faith, they have a higher degree that we have to have mercy towards and care towards and the likes of this. But in this hadith, it's very clear. The one who is a true loser, the one who is a true failure, is the one who does not have any mercy in his heart for humanity. There's floods in Pakistan. There's Muslim Uyghurs in China. I'm just talking about the Muslims, even though we can look other other places. Humanity is all of mankind. But even just looking at our Ummah, the Uyghurs in China, the Rohingya in Burma, the Pakistan, in Pakistan now there's floods killing hundreds of people. Our Muslim brothers and sisters are being killed by Hindus in India with no holding back. In Palestine, we have Gaza and, and the other areas of Palestine that are being choke-holded for years upon years with no food and drink, being restricted on the hottest of days from electricity and the like. In Yemen, famine, disease, impoverished. Somalia, Sudan, go around the globe to the Muslim lands. It's not just about, oh, he didn't mention my country. These are all of our lands, all of our people. We're 1.8 billion plus, but we're the weakest of groups. Because we have none of that taqwa. taqwa ha huna, as the Prophet said, we're lacking in that taqwa. And that taqwa's place is in the heart. If you have no mercy for humanity, you're a loser. I don't care if you come with a degree full of walls. Every car in the planet is owned by you. You own a whole city or an island. You're a loser and a failure if you do not have mercy in your heart for humanity and what's happening to humanity. Abu Sa'id, he reported, and I'm just going to read this one in English. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, there are four kinds of hearts. A polished heart as shiny as a shiny radiant lamp. A heart that is sealed with a knot tied around it. A heart that is turned upside down and a heart that is wrapped. As for the polished heart, it is the heart of the believer. It shines, it glistens. Its lamp is the light of their iman, of faith. The lamp is the light of faith. The sealed heart is the heart of the disbeliever. Allah has sealed it. Unless He guides it, there is no guiding it. The heart that is turned upside down, this is the heart of the munafiq of the pure hypocrite. He had knowledge. He had knowledge of what the haq was. He had knowledge of the truth. But he denied it. He didn't want to listen to it. 
He had other goals in mind. He denied it. This is the munafiq. And Allah said, وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ They're in the deepest, lowest, worst part of Jahannam. It's the munafiq, the hypocrite. And then there's the heart that it's wrapped. And this heart has faith, it has iman, and it has nifaq, it has hypocrisy, it has both of them. So now what is the parable of the heart that has faith? It's like feeding some, some, some um, herbs or plants with good, pure water so that it grows and it nourishes and it provides. Right? And the parable of nafaq, of hypocrisy, is the parable of an ulcer, a hole in your stomach that seeps through it, pus and blood. It's weak. It's diseased. It's sick. Whichever is stronger of the two will win. This is how the hadith ends. Whichever is greater of the two will dominate the heart. Is it going to be the, your iman? Or is it going to be nafaq, hypocrisy? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many ayat, many hadith, all summed up with the one hadith we keep mentioning. وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ In your body is a piece of flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَتْ جَسَدُ كُلُّهُ If it's sound, this piece of flesh is sound, if you work on it, if you strengthen it, if you take care of it, if you warn it, if you ask Allah to guide it, if you ask Allah to make it firm, the rest of you is going to be sound. But if it's corrupt, if it's diseased, if you let envy and greed and jealousy and arrogance and pride and all of these other things, bad character, if you let this take over your heart, it'll be corrupt. And then the rest of your heart will be corrupt. إِنَّ فِي الْجَسِدِ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسِدُ كُلُّهُ إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسِدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ It is the heart. It is the heart. It is the heart. May Allah rectify our hearts and make our hearts Amen. firm upon this deen Amen. and one of good character, Amen. one of care, one of concern, content with what Allah has chosen for it. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين